Yeah, yeah no, it's done. Uh, is it on? Yep. It says we're live. We're live. Okay. So is Ben doing the it. intro? Where's Ben? What happens? Where's Ben? There's no Ben. Ben's not here. Sorry, folks. There's no Ben. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the original Drink and Draw Social Club featuring your usual cast of characters. We have Mr. Jeff Johnson. Woo! Yay, Yay. Jeff! The <laughs> urban barbarian, the, the self-nicknamed urban barbarian himself. Well, that's not true. That's mm. not Mr. Not true. Dan Pan 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 No Shin. And the man with all, who knows where all the convention bodies are buried. The one and only Mr. Dave Johnson. Dave's got all the best stories. So stories so good, we're not going to be able to tell all of them here. No, we but really, in, in truth, this just this, tell any of them. What was that, Dave? But I said we really shouldn't tell any of them. Yeah, but what the hell? That's what the show's about. But right. really, the, the, this show came about because I, I think really this is your show, Dan. You, you. Uh, hang on, I should be really facing over here, but my microphone's over here. Um, you should. Um, you seem to have a lot that you wanted to talk about about conventions. So, well, uh, well you, you know, this is your subject. You, you said I, I've got a lot to get off my mind. I've something is weighing heavy on me. I'm upset. I'm losing sleep. And yeah. you wouldn't tell us what it was, but you wanted to say it here for everyone. To, uh, I, like, I can't enjoy. talk to you about it personally, Joe, but I can talk to the entire world. As you should. Yeah. As you should. I, I think I think the best way to air your personal grievances, the things that are going wrong with uh, with you psychologically, I think for everyone, I think we should just find a – someone should create a social platform where people go Ooh. on <laughs> and, that would be and a fail – Everything about themselves, like from the foods they eat right. to 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 every time they go to the hospital, they show us our, their open wounds. I love that stuff, and I, I wish I wish there was a place where we could like really sort of see these things on a day, minute by minute basis, you know. And I think well, my favorite thing about it is that I think that before people once they get upset about it, before they before they leave, before they say I'm out of here, I'm never doing this again, they should announce that. They should announce and say I'm going to leave because everybody. <laughs> Everybody sucks, and then uh, wait for the fanny pats, and then say, "Oh, okay, I'm back." I don't I'm know. Back. Yeah. Now, Is it, you know, it, it's, it's just leaving. Just leave. Just hmm. leave. People you know? like to announce those things, Joe. I don't yeah. get it. I don't get it. Is I've there been, somebody? You know, like, is there somebody who did, today announced they're leaving Twitter? No, no. Actually, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to say this for months because I see it all the time. I see somebody say, oh, "I'm leaving Twitter," and 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 I cannot tell you how often someone actually leaves permanently. Um, you know, no. there, there are times I've left Twitter and social for like a month, three months, in fact, one time. Three? Nobody knew it. <laughs> <It's>, oh. <laughs> I left. You know, right. it, it wasn't because you I was upset. Them. I just, just, just didn't feel like doing it anymore, you know? So you're saying they should do, what is that, an Irish goodbye where you are at a party? And Irish goodbye. Just just everybody do the Irish goodbye. It's so much better, you know? Oh, the French goodbye. Yeah, what is the French goodbye? What is that? Once you leave, but you want everyone to talk about it as you go. No, I don't know. Look, when you when you announce you're leaving, you're leaving Twitter, right? What, mm. what do you really say, right? You're saying make it's like sense. you know, it's you know, when you leave a bar, you do the Irish goodbye, you're gone, right? Instead of saying, "I am out of here. No one loves me. No one cares about me." So you guys don't deserve me. I'm out. I like that. Hey, what do you exactly. think? What do you think, Dave? I agree. I totally agree. You 100% agree. I do that all the time. Yeah, you know, and Dave does actually sort of drift away. We well, had a party, and, you, and then I have to get on. I, then I have to get on Twitter and announce that I left the party. Because yeah. no one knows. <laughs> That's the best. Even though you're the tallest like, guy. I just, I just wonder if, if fans in the general public know exactly what happens when someone says that. I am out of here. Oh well. So Dan, it happens. Sorry, it happens, I just, Joe. We have to. I just accept. aired my grievances. How about you? So tell tell us what's upsetting you about bars, Barcon. Barcon. We're just going to die right now. Barcon. First of all, what is Barcon? I have no idea. I don't even know. Barcon is a term that that came up maybe a year ago. Is that my? Sooner, I think. It's not that long ago. Yeah. Barcon is the alleged convention, or just the the people that. Are the pros at the bar, hang out at the hotel bar, whatever the bar is that everybody's hanging out at after the convention? So um, um, there's a lot of controversy surrounding it because um, 
fans and prospective artists and writers and uh, who knows what editors maybe one day are um, chit chatting with with the professionals. So it could get messy sometimes. Well, let's uh, let's let's back up back up a bit and um, and lay some groundwork. So there's the convention, right? We all know convention like the New York Comic Con or Baltimore, which is coming up. (laughs) Yeah. Right, or just a standard comic book convention, any of them, you know, that are, are of a certain size. And there's the pros go, the companies go, fans go, cosplay people who are also fans, but also everyone and, goes to the show. Artists and writers. Right, and then after the show, um, and not when the when the show floor is closed and everyone's done selling their wares, a lot of people wind up. Uh, at the various bars that might be in the hotel or in the street or in San Diego, there's that entire gaslight district. Yeah. And that, the, that, that phenomenon that takes place after the convention has been dubbed BarCon. Oh, okay. Well, there you right. have it. I guess so, the episode's over. It's, it's over. But what Dan, Dan, what you're saying is like the, what happens at BarCon is, can be, uh, um, can be a bit of a debate. Like yeah. The, well, the, I mean, I think it's it 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 can be for some people. I think it's uh, it's a, it's an unusual situation. It's kind of like how you know when we grew up, there was no social media platforms. We couldn't interact with uh, our favorite creators, uh, comic book creators online, and uh, there was kind of a mystery there. And and because of conventions and how they've really kind of caught on, you know, you can probably bump into. Um, people you know at, at these conventions afterwards or obviously even during but afterwards you're, you might get a, a different version of dave johnson <laughs> or well i mean my favorite version of dave johnson is when he's had two cranberry and vodkas <laughs> that's true that's yeah, a good that's, dave johnson. <laughs> that's that's the that's that's when the dave starts to smile and it starts to maybe hug you a little bit he loosens that's up the, a little yeah hey i, I i'm a good drunk yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is 100%. Well, I think that's, a, that's the other problem with BarCon is people, you know, let off some steam. They, they get a little, uh, get a little loose. Well, I mean, since we did jump right into it, I'm going to go ahead and uh, so it's, I would, I would never have just, I mean, it's, it's new to name things, right? Hashtag BarCon. When I was I, breaking I in, did it. Yeah. when I was breaking in, there was no such delineation between the show and then after the show you would just go to the show and then um if you made a friend or you made a connection during the show since it's chaotic and there's a there's a cacophony of sound and it's hard to have a real conversation about your craft or a job you would then often meet up later at the bar and that is how i got introduced and became friends with many of the people that i wound up working for for decades hmm I agree. That's how I've got a lot of jobs. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, I guess my take on it is a little, I sort of live in between. Mm. Um, hmm. You know, I, I've had this, Dan, you and I've had this conversation in the past, you know, uh, can you guys hear me? Okay. Cause if I face the camera, I'm not facing the microphone. So. I can hear you. You can hear me. Okay. Can hear you great. Um, so, uh, you know, they, they, clearly when you're when you're when you're you know when you're at a bar, stuff's going to happen, right? People get out of control, and 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 but uh, at, at which point, you know, if, if if I'm and I have, I've felt uncomfortable several times, at, you know, different places, and I'm just like, ah, I'm out of here, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so so you know, for someone to demand that that uh, whatever behavior is happening at a bar be cleaned up, I mean, you don't know if the people are there are comic pros or not comic pros. But you know, I when I do talk to to, to comic pros about going to conventions, I, I, I think what happens is that because we're sort of out of our the four rooms that constitute whatever our studio is, mm-hmm. and we're out of our uh, you know sort of you know home base area, uh, people just want to lay off steam, right? Yeah. And 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 you know because I live on both sides of the table, artist and uh, the business side of the table. The thing I, the thing I keep telling people, and, and you know, for for young creators out there who might be listening, not you, Dan, because you don't listen at all. Uh, uh-huh. But I keep reminding them, you know, this is kind of like a business meeting, right? You are um, you are in a situation where you are aren't just amongst your peers, your your artistic peers, but you're amongst a lot of the people that run the 
businesses of these businesses, right? So, you know, if, if I'm publisher of, you know, whatever, Joe's Comics, uh, actually, it wasn't Joe's Comics, but if I'm publisher of, of Joe Q's Comics, um, you know, the, the business side of it, and, and, and I'm at uh, a dinner somewhere or I'm at a bar somewhere and I see, uh, you know, some young artists come in stumbling, right, or, um, or, 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 or being abusive, whatever it may be. First thing in my mind is like, I don't know if I want to work with that person, you know. So I, I, I constantly encourage people. If, if look, look, I don't, I don't begrudge anybody blowing off steam, but, but um, to put it, to put it in the words of my, 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 our favorite buddy from Brooklyn, Frank, right? Uh, pardon my pun, but uh, why are you showing your ass to people? You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's like if you want to go out and get stumbling drunk, don't do it in a business environment. You know, sort of. Right. Go go somewhere else. There's plenty of other places to go and be stupid. Um, but at the same time, if you're someone who finds that that there's a you know way too many people that are just you know behaving in a way that makes you uncomfortable, then just get the hell out of there too. You know. Yeah. But from a professional standpoint, I, I just I just always advise people. You know, you don't because I've seen it, man. I've seen people get ridiculously stupid uh, at the con bars. You know, some folks are like Dave, they're just happy, right? Hey, how are you? You know, like, where, where was this Dave all along? Uh, <laughs> Dave? Alcohol. Like, but, you know, but some folks, right. you know, there there are some folks that are angry drunks. There are some folks that are a little too affectionately drunk. There's some folks that go through the street, three, uh, I like to say the three stages of, of, of drunkenness. What, are those? Uh, what was that? What's the three stages? You know, like 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 happily buzz, then then uh, uh, a little too much attention seeking, and then anger. Uh, I've seen those. Uh, Dan, you have a very interesting third stage. I've noticed. We've talked about this. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, Dan, so, like, I I I've seen Dan come to a bar, not a convention. I mean, it was it was a convention, but but we picked a. Separate bar, right? Random we're just doing bar. Of us were hanging. The mutual We're friends. miles and miles away. Yeah, and Dan came in, and he'd already been out, you know, for a while. Four sheets to the wind, and Dan stage three, and I know this is stage three because I've seen this happen twice already. Is he loses the power of speech? So I do sign he, language. What do you mean sign language? <laughs> it's like, it's like I'll, I'll ask Dan a question, and you're like he'll be moving his head, and he thinks he's saying words. Mm. But he's not. There's nothing coming out, and uh, and I'll just like yes him and, and pretend like we're having a conversation. I'm like, okay, stage three for Dan. Right. Uh, <laughs> and then Joe just usually moves on. Yeah, but you know, so, so I, I don't know if Barcon's really a thing. I think people, you know, people want to make it a thing, and 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 I understand both sides of the argument. But from a professional standpoint, man, especially for young creators, like look, you and I can sit here, the the, the four of us can sit here, and and as soon as the, we're off the air, if I said to you, name name a convention alcoholic, we'll have like a list of five or six people because we know who they are, right? Mm -hmm. um, sure. And and it's just it's a bad look. It's a really bad look. Uh, in, in any industry. In yeah. any industry, but I'm saying, but the thing is that we don't sometimes our industry doesn't view itself as an industry. That's, That's a really good all, point. You know, we're all professionals. You know, Dan, right. you you have a brand, right? Dan Pinochet, Urban, Urban Barbarian, <sighs> terrible brand. Dave, you have a brand. Jeff, you have a brand, right? Right. You go out there, and every time you're out in public, you are representing your brand, right? So, so, so why not? Treat it as as cautiously as a big corporation treats their brand, right? Well, what about um, this, Joe? I, I hear that, and and one could say that save that for the convention floor, and now we're you're off duty, and maybe it's, it's like a cop bar, like like you're a like you're a cop, and now you're at a cop bar. I, I, but I'm not I'm not arguing cop. that. What, what what I'm saying is, if you are like remember um, in Chicago, right? When when the Chicago convention used to be at the Rosemont Hotel, right? Oh, I remember. There was only one place to go, and right. that was the bar downstairs, appropriately named Knuckles. Uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> right. And, and, Knuckles, and, and, and so Knuckles was filled not just with artists, but with right. fans and with executives of the mm -hmm. comic companies, right? Sometimes very uh, handsome executives. Right. What was that? Sometimes very handsome executives. Thank you. I appreciate that. Right. Yeah. But – 
you know, and so so that that's a different because there was literally, you know, that hotel was by the airport. So you either went to Knuckles or you grabbed the cab and, and you took the 40 minute ride into the city. Um, mm-hmm. So all I'm saying is that I'm not saying don't blow off steam at at the convention, but just as you would no, so, no sooner be drunk on the convention floor. I know you've been drunk on the convention floor, Dan. No sooner would you be drunk on the convention floor should you probably think about being drunk at a function where you know, like, you know, the heads of DC or Marvel or Dark or any of these companies are, and, and also fans, you know? Uh, it, it just, no. you know, it, it's just, again, that's just, that's just my thing. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I think, I think that's a good point. I think I always thought of whenever I go to a convention that A, I'm there as a, as a professional. Um, and so I always think of even when I'm at, after the show and I'm out at dinner or uh, a bar or, or you know, wandering the streets or whatever, mm-hmm. on some level, I'm still still representing myself as someone you may or may not want to work with. Um, and I think that that's always something you keep in mind, even if you're out having fun, right? Because I think that this is a this is a business as a as a comic book professional and as an artist in general, what you're you're really selling is yourself. Mm-hmm. And I'm not the greatest artist, but I am I know that I'm good to work with. Like I know that I get I work well with, on projects, that, that, that mm-hmm. I'm a good collaborator. And that is something that you get to know about someone when you're hanging out with them in person. And part of that is yeah. after the show. So you're always kind of interviewing for your next gig. And it's good to remember that no matter what the environment is. Yeah. And, and look, I, 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 I know, uh, you know, that this is not hypothetical. I know of several examples where, where people, you know, suddenly were, were, were shut down from work from, from, from any of the big companies because they were just, um, it was just like really just bad behavior. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I, I've, I've seen it, I've seen it happen. So, um, and that's the kind of thing because right, like like like, like you, you could go out and have as much fun with your friends anywhere. It's just it's just it, it. We have to keep reminding ourselves it is a business environment, a business environment. Yeah. Um, this is where, especially as a freelancer, this is where I get work right. Because if you're if you're a Marvel employee, right? So you're 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 on the company you're on the company dole, right? You're on the payroll. You have to go to that bar and behave in a certain way, right? right. And so, uh, because you're, you know, you're, it's expected by the company. So, so if I'm if I'm working for myself, why should my standards be lower right. than those of, uh, you know, of what, what a company expects, you know, in terms of professionalism? So, you know, it's it it literally. And, and again, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with having a few drinks at a bar. I'm not a drinker, so it's not that big a deal. And it's nothing wrong with having a few drinks and 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 and, and you know. Being a little, you know, little looser than you normally are, but you know, you do have to be careful. You have to, yeah. you have to remember that you're constantly representing yourself. Totally, I think that that's the one of the one of the tricks I find is just being a responsible adult, right? That can be um, that can be a problem, you know, for for anyone, but. <laughs> Especially, you know, if you are cooped up in your house all year and then you get to go to a show and then you, as you were saying, cut loose. I definitely think that that's, um, it can be, it can be a problem, especially if you're amongst friends and you don't know and everyone, you gen- like as artists, we are all pretty sensitive um, to what's going on around us. But, you know, sometimes after a long day, you forget. I think it's, uh, it can be a bit of, um a quagmire to, to walk around in sometimes. Yeah. Quagmire. Do you like that word, Dan? Do you like quagmire? I do. I do like the word quagmire. Thank you. Dan, can I see what you're drawing there? What do you got? It looks like... Oh. This is a samurai wolverine drawing. I love I like drawing... That. You know what? I really like those um, those issues with... I guess it was mostly... Did Paul Smith start them, or was it right into Frank Miller? Uh, Paul Smith did some X Men stuff when he was a samurai. Frank Miller yeah. did some stuff when he was a samurai, but also Al Milgram did a bunch of cool samurai stuff. Oh yeah, the the Logan or the Wolverine and Kitty Pride. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, you know, Joe, I wanted to say, like, I do think that. Um, yeah, I just I had to post something on the board there. There we go. Okay. I think that was appropriate. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Why is Ted always a smart ass? Ted, Ted knows us. <laughs> I, I really, I just, I don't. <laughs> he, he definitely, know, he definitely knows us. For yeah, sure. I, I just, I, uh, you know, um, I barely know Ted, but I, I dislike him like I, like I've known him for a long time. It's almost well, like I mean, you dislike him as much as you dislike me. Right. He's re he, no, he's reaching Pinocchio levels of dislike. Yeah. Um, one of the things about, and it's you true. guys all know, like we've all made comics together and we've made comics for a long time. And uh, we've worked in other industries where there's, you know, you, anytime you're making a show or art or a comic or whatever, it can be a little bit like um, being in the trenches. You know, you, it's, it's late nights, it's long hours, it's strange requests. It's, um, it can be emotionally taxing. What kind and of comics think, are you working on, Jeff? Say what? <laughs> what kind of comics are these you're working on? <laughs> Listen, I, I, I had a long, it's been a, it's a long up and down career. Um, True. But uh, so as you know, one of like you really need to, to be friends with, or at least enjoy working with the people that you're doing the gig with. Usually, um, I mean, there's some distance because we're all freelancers. But you, I think the best work comes from you know good relationships amongst the creators and. I think that that's uh, that when you're out drinking that sometimes I can get a little out of hand, especially if there are strangers amongst. Strangers amongst us. Strangers amongst, yeah. Yeah. So, 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 Dave, give us a good convention story. You've got some good ones. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, well, we could. Well, <laughs> can't talk about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not about that one either. No, not that one, Dave. No, no, don't go. Oh, he's gonna go there. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know. I mean, I've always tried to have fun at shows. I mean, mm -hmm. the way I look at it, it's a chance to see a new city that I haven't been to, or maybe a favorite city. And you know, some of my best times are after the show. Mm -hmm. I mean, the show right. is. You know, everybody always asks me, "How do you like the show?" And I'm like. The shows are all the same. I, yeah. I I I see this area that I'm sitting at that usually doesn't change, and the people change, but it's usually a giant convention that I hold no connection to, and you know it's it's more about the people that I'm I'm getting to hang out with after. Yeah. So I mean, the, the, there are a few shows that have like a different flavor, right? Or you, like a different, like, like I've always, I haven't been there in years, but I always loved Heroes Con, right? Because it's always yeah. felt, it's family run. So it always has that kind of feeling to it, you know, when you go there. Um, yeah, well, but also, show. also some of the weirdest stories come out of that Heroes Con show. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, I mean, we've talked about it before, but like Scuba Guy and Scuba Guy, Legend. there was a white witch guy. <laughs> And and right. glue guy. I don't know if glue guy was uh, Charlotte or not, but I definitely remember. I can't remember. I think it was on the East Coast. Um, and, and you know, I think we talked about this too. It's like the internet's kind of taken that away because now these people can find people on the internet to draw this stuff for them. So right. it's they no longer have to ask in person, which right. I'm sure. Very, very relieved to not have to say the weird psychosexual fetish thing out loud. Or, or maybe that is the thrill. You don't know, right? No, you know, I've, I've, I remember uh, the the white witch guy from Legion. Oh, and yeah. He kept it very quiet, like he was embarrassed, and I, I couldn't hear him. And yeah. I said, "Dude, you got to speak up. I can't hear you." And he's like. And he was like, "Can you can you draw the white witch pregnant?" And I was like, "Oh, come on, dude!" <laughs> like it was just so. Yeah. Yikes! That's you that's like my experience with him. It might have been the same convention. I think it was. I think. It was, uh, yeah, he 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 loved the white witch, um, and you know, I I don't I don't draw characters naked. I just you know I never have. Right. So so he asked if I can uh, if I could draw the white witch. Naked and in I a said, state of undress. And I said no, and then he went away. And and you know he, he asked. He's very 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 timid, very very shy. And then he came back. He's like, uh 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 um, how about topless? And I'm like, hmm, that's some, that's a fair compromise. That's quite you. naked. Yeah. And, and I said no. Right. Uh, I said if you if you if you want the white witch, I will I will only draw her for you from the neck up. 
Wow. And, and he said, oh, such oh, a oh. rude. And he said, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but he agreed. He agreed. And he was, he was, um, he was the last, like one of the last people on my list. So I wasn't going to be able to get to his sketch until Sunday. So Sunday comes around. I, 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 um, I do his sketch and it's like, you know, under a pile of other sketches. And, you know, he, he, he comes over and he's really super shy, like unbelievably shy. And, uh, and he says, do, do you have it? I'm like, yeah. And I just sort of slide it over and he turns it and he looks at it and he, it's, it's, I'm, I'm probably over dramatizing this part, but he does one of these. Right. And this part, I'm not over dramatizing. He, he reaches for the drawing mm-hmm. and he touches it. He's like, it's, it's too hot to touch. It's too hot to touch, right? Kind of thing. And, and I'm just sitting there going, I just want my money. <laughs> right. And, uh, and then he takes it and he puts it in a manila envelope and, and he goes on with his story about how he, he takes these drawings and, and he, he places them under his bed and he only takes them out you know, on, on certain nights when the moon is X, Y, and Z, and then he takes them out and he looks at them under the moonlight. And I'm like, dude, just pay me. <laughs> so, so he reaches into his pocket and he, he takes out the money and it's all wadded up. And he goes, here you go. And he hands it to me and it's wet. The money is raining out. Or how did that? Uh, what was that? Raining out, Joe. Everything doesn't have to be gross. It could have been raining. I know. I could have stopped right there, right? But, uh, but Dan, give us a good convention story. Let, let's let, let cleanse us of this last one. I just yeah, Dan. Here you go. Apart from the drawing, um, I don't. I don't know how many great convention stories I actually have. I mean, they're all kind of a blur. Maybe maybe Barcon has has ruined me. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, so we're t- so there's Barcon and there's convention stories, but I just wanted to throw out like since it is a pros and cons kind of like how to navigate conventions in general. To to Joe's point, one of the things I learned the hard way was when someone wants to get a commission from you, right? You a ask what they want before you agree to it, and then always get paid first just make sure like and just be like just get the money first make sure that it's right down and then get there um for everyone out there doing doing commissions it shows i always make sure i get their phone number so that i get i get the name i get the i get the sketch the Mm -hmm. kind of sketch i get paid i get the number so that i can always call them because i've been left with sketches plenty of times at the end of shows you're like oh i don't want this this is not helpful to me your own drawing? Yeah. Well, of someone, of what someone wanted, it can be weird oh, sometimes. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, it is strange. There has been a lot of times where they're, um, luck, luckily, our guy Jason makes sure he gets everybody, it's, you know, everybody's stuff because, yeah, people will, <clears throat> people will leave and, and not uh, pick up their sketches, which is crazy. Right. So, Dan, come on, give us a story. You've got to have lots of stories. Yeah, Dan, you've got some good ones. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I mean, Dan, this is your subject. Come on. Well, I mean, I just wanted well, to. Apart- uh, I mean, my biggest thing is I, I think that uh, with with Barcon, you can expect that um, you know thing, things things at a bar are going to be just like they are at a regular bar, and uh, to you know treat it as such. I mean. If you don't like the conversation or some guy's out of line or some girl is out of line, then, then move on. You know, um, it's, it's a, it's a social situation. It's, it's not professional. Obviously if somebody's out of line, uh, in a big way, you gotta, you know, definitely say something or say something to the staff, you know, Dan, I don't remember Like, so it was a long time ago and, um, and for the most part, Dan's Dan is always a gentleman at any kind of con or bar con. <laughs> this like, is gonna go real bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, so so Dan is all so Dan is always a gentleman. Like, anyway, Dan is always a gentleman. He's always kind. He's always great to hang out with. Like we've been friends forever. So like I've been to plenty of shows with Dan. I remember Dan and I. I can't even remember what show. I think it might have been a Wonder Con, but we were at a show and um, a friend of ours was had been kind of treated rudely by someone at the show oh, and he came that. over and uh, he's like, Oh, that guy was such a, like such just a dick. It was mean. It was, he's kind of, we kind of, we kind of was pushy. He like, shoved me out of the way. 
and this is a, we had he's a gentle friend of ours and um and we're both like oh no that's not no, that's acceptable, not acceptable. <laughs> that's not acceptable at all and so um I, I went, Dan, okay, go over there and then sit. So the guy was sitting at a table and you sat next. There was the uh, there was a stand or, or sort of like a planter next to the table where he was sitting. So you sat on the table and then you just sat next to him. And then you can be quite an imposing figure. You're, you're, you're especially back in the day you, you, when you had a tank top on. It was the no joke. Top, he's oiled up and – yeah, he's oiled up and tanked. And, and, and so – I, I said, okay. And, and then you sat next to him. And I just kept kind of nut. Like, I'm like, no, no, go a little more. And then you kept leaning on him a little bit and then a little bit more. And then, a, and then a little bit more until you were, you were basically just <laughs> laying on top of the guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen that guy at the, at the bar or the movie theater that doesn't, isn't aware of their personal space. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Where they're just like they're like they have to know they're pushing into you, but I I, I just kept doing it to that guy too. Oh, it was it was perfect because it just felt like this is a little bit of justice. Where like yeah. this guy was a dick, and then yeah. the minute he looked over, he thought he was tough. And the minute he looked over and saw who was leaning on him, he just just took it. <laughs> he didn't say anything after that. That it was one of my all rest. time favorite moments. I loved that. <laughs> Listen, the 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 tank top and the uh, baby oil probably it might have just been the uh, baby oil. It, oh, yeah. the baby well, was, oil. it was like, smooth. I'm surprised you didn't slip yeah, off. Yeah, you felt like that feels good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It probably smelled nice, right? You smell like uh, baby oil. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. So, so Jeff just told the, uh, the Dan story. Dan hasn't told the Dan story yet. Hmm. I'm trying to think of think of. By the way, Dan, I need to grade your performance on this show already. It's been highly disappointing so far. I know that's why I turned the reins over to Jeff. I I, I, I'm, I, I was getting no, but I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, Dave. We you know Dave is sitting there working, so so you know he's focusing and, and doesn't always talk. But that's what we get, you know, with Dave. Yeah, right. You are. This is your. This, this is your big, bugaboo. You're you're just a grand idea. idea. Hmm? <laughs> let, me, let me think if I know any great. I mean, a great. My favorite conventions were the first ones, like the the uh, Greenberg shows in New York before it became the. Um, like the big New York Comic Con that it is at the Javits Center, mm-hmm. and uh, this isn't a very exciting story, but I had never seen uh, actual comic book pages before, and I met Scott Dunbeer, and he's showing me like, wow, you can buy this, you know, Walt Simonson page for seventy dollars. And I, granted, I think I had to my name, I had six hundred dollars at the time, mm-hmm. um, but uh, I was like, well, that, well, that's actually affordable. Well, you come a long way. <laughs> yeah, I've come a long way. Now I have seven hundred dollars. So, um, yeah. But uh, you know, he's like, "I'll flip you for it, double or nothing." And you know, either you pay double or uh, I give it to you for free. I will say this: I've never won with Scott Dunbeer, but the quarter is always the same quarter because he has a little red. No, I'm just kidding. But no, I've never won with uh, with Scott. But he he would do that, and of course, I would buy pages, and even at even at a double price. You know, those, those pages that I have now are, you know, quadruple the value. But I remember seeing for the first time um, a Bernie Wrightson, I think it was like Phantom of the Opera or something. It was just this madcap lunatic playing the piano from behind. It was one of those, um, not a piano, it was one of those um, like huge organs, pipe organs. Um, mm-hmm. And it was, it was the illustration in my mind was like as big as I am. It was a massive drawing. And I, I was just like, wow, you, you don't have to, you're not limited to an 11 by 17 page. Like these people were actually making real art. And I got to see, um, you know, there's Bernie Rice and the guy who drew it right there. And it was just, it was just an amazing time. Yeah. Of course, later on, Joe, I was on the floor at, at a booth and, um, you know, occasionally this is early and frowned upon now and probably would never happen. I would never dream of it, but occasionally I might. You know, have a bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> yeah, but that's evil twenty-one-year-old Dan, the type of guy that would yeah. smear yeah. baby oil on himself and lean on a dude at, after a game. Yeah, this somehow didn't destroy his career. Right. Well, I mean, 21. listen, <laughs> the leaning uh, lean on the dude was my idea. Dan, Dan was really the, the the vehicle yeah. for my, and, for and my actually, debauchery. I wouldn't do something like that, but I got to say this. Jeff is a much better person than I am, and if Jeff <laughs> wanted me to do that to some dude. <laughs> you know, and you like, knew I had a good ask, reason. It's you know, like it, God, it's almost like God coming down and saying, 
you may behave badly. And I'm like, at last. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, it, Scott Dumbier, I love Scott. Scott is one of the one of the true gentlemen of the industry. I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a convention story with Scott. Um, there was a, uh, a big company party and, uh, and Scott was one of the hosts. Um, he was nice enough to invite me and, and, and he invited, uh, uh, Nancy. I, I think we were, I don't think we were married yet at that point. Um, uh, so we go to this crazy, I mean, it's a crazy part. So, you know, it's just like everybody who's anybody is at this party. And, um, and we, 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 I see this shall always remain nameless, uh, really big time artist. Um, and he is being, and he's with a young lady who happens to be four sheets to the wind. Mm. And there's some stuff. It's it just, it was not cool. It was not cool. And so, you know, I went to Scott and I said, Hey, listen, I don't know if you could, if you, you know, this is happening. There's a lot of people here, but here's what I see X, Y, and Z. Now, you know, I could see how, and again, th this is going back many, many, many years, uh, probably close to 20 years. And I could see at that time, day and age where someone who, you know, who was working for a company, seeing a really prominent artist who, you know, could, could produce work that would probably make them a lot of money, uh, could just say, uh, I, I, I can't say anything. He went right over and threw that person's ass out. Mm. And I was like, there you go. You know what I mean? And I'll never forget that about Scott, you know. Scott he, he, he didn't, you know, if he had seen it, he would have done it himself, but he had no, you know, he was hosting and, and walking around. It was a big space. And, uh, but then when he saw it, he was like, nope, not in my house. Right. So, uh, you know. I think Scott asked me and me and Tim to at, remove a, um, or that's right. Um, was that, I think that was the same, was it the same thing? The same person? San Diego Comic Con. Yep. Um, yeah. We, we were talking about the same person. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, Tim, Tim and I had to. Uh, is is a large individual. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, yep. But, but yeah, he was not not behaving correctly. And um, yeah. Luckily, I've you know, well, whatever. Anyway, uh, then someone asked us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, he he did notice that, and I, and Jim Lee pointed it out too, as I recall. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Jim, yeah. Jim was on it as well. Uh, so come on, Dan. You must have a good one. These these are all well, pretty lame. That's actually one of them. That's 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 one of them. So you yeah, that's one really, it's, that's that's a tough one to talk about. You know, because <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's even right. more details there. But that's there's a lot of details. Yeah, you know. Um, but I, I'll just I'll never forget that. You know, and I'll never forget how quickly Scott handled it, which was again fantastic. That is um, Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I, I have a good convention story, but it's it's a bit long. So I want you to get yours out first, Dan. You want to just get my boring one out of the way? No, I, I want to hear something good from you. I, tell, to I, have a, I, have a, I have a really good one, Joe. Okay, because Dan's supposed to be a storyteller, right? We're all supposed to be storytellers here, and Dan's just, like, <laughs> Dan's just mumbling his way through this episode. We I, can't all... for, I can't wait for 10 just not to have to hear Dan mumble. Right, right. Yeah. We all are professionals. So I can't remember exactly what year this was. It was um, – it's my favorite – it's my favorite uh, com like comic book convention experience, and I was super lucky this year. So, I had just started drawing Wonder Man. I think I don't even I don't even know the first issue had come out yet. And uh, I was at a San Diego con, and uh, at that point we were all very poor, and we had been sharing a room together. Um, it was uh, me and a bunch of other comic book artists and old friends who'd been going to the show for years, and we went out on that Friday night. And got completely hammered somewhere in the Gaslight District, which was always a great time. And then that oh. next morning, after waking up on the floor in this crappy little hotel room, wearing just like the part of the other person, like the sheet or the, the comforter from the bed that someone else was in that I pulled over and just like just, just something to cover myself with, I thought like, what the hell am I doing this for? I'm a professional artist. And um <laughs> I walked up and this was, I just walked up. It was the double tree at the time, right? I know this is a long, long time ago. And before in the, in the olden days, the, at San Diego, the rooms were actually cheaper 
like they made them more affordable as now they double like double quadruple the price but i went into the to the double tree and um they had a they had a room um for me but it was the the only room they had available um was this this small tiny little room and so i got it and then i went in and then but i went in they, they were wrong like oh we thought we had this room but we don't have this room but we booked it and we were real sorry and so they bumped me up to the governor's suite and so i'm like oh okay fantastic and this is my luckiest day yeah. and then i went to the governor they gave me the key to the governor's suite and i went in um and it turned out that somebody actually had um a standing key to the governor's suite and so they just would show up and take that suite whenever they felt like it so i walked into the aftermath of this crazy party there was like underwear on the ground there was bottles everywhere and uh and i called from the room i like i called down I'm like hey i think someone's actually in this room maybe i just get a different room and then the concierge came up and they took me to the the next thing the presidential suite and so i went from a crappy little room that I was sharing with someone to a crappy little room at a hotel to the governor's suite to the presidential suite. And they opened the doors and it was this at the, the double tree, which is, I guess now the Omni or used to be the Omni. And it was two story windows, a grand piano, a kitchen, a hot tub. It was, was a, a great the room. stairs went up to a master bedroom. There was a, uh, uh, you know, a steam little room and it, it was, this most this incredible experience, and I thought like, oh, I'm having a party. And, and, I, a great told, party. and I told everyone I could <laughs> talk to the next day, like, come to the Double Tree and hang out at my party. And it was just, it was great. It was nice. one of those. That's where I met uh, Derek, actually. Right. Yeah. I got a yeah. short one. I, I remember uh, I was, you know, when 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 Jimmy and I were were first working together, and when. Uh, when we started event comics, you know, we would, you know, we, we were traveling everywhere, doing every convention. So we roomed together. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then, you know, eventually had our own separate rooms and we were, you know, we were adults. We were, we were no longer struggling artists. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there was, there was one convention that where Frank asked if he could room with me. Oh, now, you know, Dan, you've roomed with Frank. <laughs> Dave, you've roomed with I Frank. I have roomed with Frank. Um, I, I knew all about this. Mm. And I'm like, ah. I'm like, Frank, I'm a grown ass man. I, I don't, he's, ah, come on, come on, I'll be fun, I'll be fun. Okay, fine. <laughs> so, so, first night, first night of the show, first damn night of the show, uh, you know, I, I get to bed early. And, uh, you know, because I got to be up in bright eyed and bushy tail doing presentations the next day and stuff. But uh, but Frank's out all night. Well, out all night, you know, and and I forgot to mention to Frank that I use a CPAP to sleep. Mm. So Frank, you know, literally burst through the door. It must be like four o'clock in the morning or so. Right. Uh, and uh, luckily, I don't wake up. I'm just out cold. But the next morning, he he's just like, whoa, 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 what the hell was that thing on your face? What was that? He's like, it was like sleeping with, I couldn't sleep. It was like sleeping with Darth Vader, sleeping with Darth Vader with that noise. I'm like, really? I'm like, hey, asshole, out of my room. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right response. <laughs> and so I let him say, last time I ever roomed with Frank Thierry, last time, never again. No, you would abuse me after you suckered me into rooming with you <laughs> right, every right. night. Every night, I mean, I, 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 I felt like a boy scout every night. I went to bed, and you know, yeah, Frank will be in at three or four in the morning. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Dan, you no, gotta have Frank stories rooming with, with Frank. That's true. Um, yeah, no, I got some good Frank uh convention stories. You care to tell any? No, uh, those are definitely stories you can't tell. <laughs> Dan, once again, Dan is being a gentleman. He is not sharing embarrassing right. stories. Yeah. I have an embarrassing story. So I think one of the things that's interesting about this, I know this episode is supposed to be about conventions. Yeah. And like the yeah. pros and cons of conventions. And I think that we covered the bar con, which I think in summation, don't be a douche. Yeah. You don't get, yeah. don't get yeah. hammered. Yeah. Remember that you're, you're basically always interviewing for your next gig as a professional, right? As a fan, 
also don't be a douche because these people are are working and or blowing off steam. So maybe give them space um, or at least understand well, but, but, but the it's, dynamic. It's, it's, yeah, it, it, no, it's, it's saying give them space. It, it's it's if it's if it's a rowdy crowd and stuff and and that's not your thing. You can't right. expect it not to be a rowdy crowd because it's not your thing. However, if someone is abusive to you, if someone's handsy, if someone's doing stuff that's just like inappropriate, no, that's not that's not cool. No matter right. where you are, right? Yeah. But yeah. if you know, it's like, look, I've walked into I've walked into clubs, I've walked into bars, where I'm just like, this is not my scene. I'm out. You know, yeah. I'm just out. Um. So, but to expect that a scene, you know is uh you know gets gets adapted to your take well that's just not gonna happen you have to find your place you, know, you have to find your scene yeah. um and and but again if there's abuse of that that's a that's a whole different animal all right so i'm gonna tell it's this, this longer story yeah. all right you, you guys patient with this one you got, you got a little time Bring it. i want to uh, hear the story all right so this, 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 <laughs> wait, this, wait. this is a, this is an interesting story because it, it involves a lot of levels of stuff so so i'm gonna i gotta flash back to when uh, when I was a kid playing music and uh, and and my band used to rehearse in Long Island and we used to rehearse in this really super expensive studio called Nino Studios. It was a top notch rehearsal recording studio in Baldwin, Long Island. Um, and the only reason we got, I mean, you know, we were 19, 20 year old kids. I think I might have been 18 at the time. But the only reason we got to rehearse in this place, which was way beyond our our finances, was because my bass player was one of the managers, right? So so he would, you know, it was his job. He would set up bands and stuff. And Nino, who owned the studio, was kind enough to say, hey, yeah, listen, if you guys want to rehearse on Sunday mornings or something before the bands get there, go ahead, go ahead, it's cool, right? So we got this great space for a little while. And this is a place where, like, bands like Joan Jett would, would, would come in, the, the Stray Cats would rehearse there, uh, Twisted Sister rehearsed there. So we were rehearsing there on a, on a Sunday. Uh, early Sunday morning, and then and then you know my bass player Mike says, "Hey, listen, we gotta we gotta clean up and go because Twitz's sister's coming in right after us." Okay, fine. So we ended our session, cleaned up the studio, and then uh, and then Mike b- before I left, Mike said, "Hey, listen, can you do me a favor? Can you watch the front desk? Uh, and because you know once Twisted gets in, we lock the doors, but the phone may ring. Just pick up the phone and just tell them that I'll get back to them and stuff." So. So here comes, you know, so so just just, just comes in, and I, all I see are like these, you know, like six foot thin guys with like it's just balls of hair, right? Massive balls of hair walking in, they, and the studio is in the basement of the of this place. So I'm just hanging out there, killing time until Mike is done setting up the studio, and the phone rings. Pick it up. Hello, Nino Studios, and it's Mike's mom, right? She's not in distress or anything. She's like, "Hey, can you be fair? He grabbed Mike. I have something I got to tell him before, you know." before X, Y, and Z. I'm like, okay, cool. So I go downstairs and, and I have to provide the visual here. So, so in order to get to the, what was called the A studio, which is a massive studio where Twisted was rehearsing, you have to go down these narrow steps and then there is a narrow corridor and then to your, and then it just ends. And then to your immediate left is the door and you open that door and there's this massive studio, but you know, but, Here's the corridor. Here's a wall. Here's a wall. Here's a door. So, um, so far it makes sense. Thank you. So I, so I go for the door and it's locked. So I knock on the door, right? And and uh, you know, it's band setting up and stuff, and the door opens up, and and there in front of me is uh, Dee Snyder, right? The the lead singer of Twisted Sister, and he's backlit and everything, and it's just like he's got this massive fro of hair. And uh, he's like, hey, man, what's up? And I'm like, hey, um, I got a message I got to give Mike. He's like, sure, walk in. And, and so he opens up the door and does one of these. Like, sure, come on in. I'm like, cool. So I take a step in, and then he grabs the door. And with all his might, he slams it shut. Whoa. And and like a, like a Warner Brothers cartoon, I get clocked in the face. So I get clocked in the face, and I go smashing into the wall behind me. It was like when he's like, boom. And I slide down and I'm on my ass, and I'm like, "What the hell just happened?" I'm and like, I go for the door, right? Now I'm furious. I go for the door, and it's locked. And in the background, I could hear D. Snyder laughing, "Wah ha ha ha, effing groupies, ah ha ha ha." What a and, douche! And uh, and I go upstairs, 
and I'm like pacing back and forth. And, and then I start running back down. I'm, I'm like, I'm going to kick that door open. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to punch this guy in the face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, but Michael grabs me before he's like, go home, go home. I'm like, no, I, he's like, go home. This is my job. I mm. just have to forget about it. Right. So I leave and I'm furious for like 24 hours. And I forget about it. I just totally forget about it. Right? Again, I was 18, 19 years old. Now, flash forward. I'm editor in chief at Marvel at this time, and it's Chicago Con at the Rosemont Hotel. And but there's another thing going on besides the comics convention, and there's Beetle Fest happening at the exact same time. So for anybody who knows, I love comics, and I love the Beatles even more. Right? Yeah. It's, it was my life just in that one convention center. So half the convention center was Beetle Fest. So I was spending time in both. And one of the coolest things about Beetle Fest at the Rosemont, because it was an atrium hotel, one of the coolest things is that that young kids would go to Beetle Fest, and then at, the, at night when the, when the festival was closed, they would all congregate in the atrium lobby, and there'd be like twenty guitars, and these kids would all be singing Beatles songs, right? Oh, that sounds great. All night long, and it was really beautiful, and 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 a bunch of the Marvel folks. We were all going to go out to dinner, so so we were all meeting at the atrium. Uh, I'm sorry, not the atrium, at the mezzanine uh, mm-hmm. of the atrium. So from the mezzanine, you know, I got there early because I just wanted to hear the music. So I'm kind of like leaning over the mezzanine, watching these kids sing, and just have a kind of have my eyes closed and doing one of these things, feeling all hippy dippy, and uh, and I could sense that there was somebody next to me, and I look over and it's just some kid, just you know, with the McDonald's French fry bag, and he's just like eating McDonald's. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm just watching this. And then the kid just says to me, don't get it. I just don't get it. I'm like, what don't you get? Like, I just don't get the Beatles, man. Right? I'm like, what? What? He's like, no, no. He's, like, he's like, Elvis, I get Elvis. I get that. I, you know, I get the Ramones. I get all, I just never could wrap my mind around the Beatles. He's like, maybe it's because my dad pushed it on me all the time. He's such a big Beatles fan. But I just, I just, you know, I can't wrap my mind around it. I'm like, oh. And then he looks at me for there's like a double take. He's like, oh my God, you're 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 Joe Casada from Mars. He's like, you're 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 one of my top three favorite artists. You know, I love McFarlane, I like Eric Art. And he just goes on and on and on and on. And and I'm like, it was he was he was just a really sweet kid. And so we just start talking. And I'm like, so listen, your dad's right, man. You gotta listen to your dad. He's like, oh man, come on. He's like, he's like, Listen, my dad's a musician. Do you know who Dee Snyder is? Mm. <laughs> Your old pal. And and I look at the kid, and literally, I had not thought about that moment at Nino's oh studios. Oh my god! Right? He the kid's sixteen at this point, and I my literally, it's like a move. It's like meant to roll this going back. It's like like you know, boom in the face. Ha ha ha! Go home, go home, the whole thing, and. And, and for a moment there, I thought, this kid has, n-, never a moment, but I thought it was like, this kid had nothing to do with that. So we just right. sat there and, yeah, and we started right talking, talking about comics and stuff. He tells me how he was, his name was Jesse, right? And he yeah. starts talking about how he wants to be a comic book writer, like loves comics. He really did. Um, flash forward, um, I'm doing an interview, and I, um, I think it was Heidi McDonald who was doing the interview. And she asked me about my greatest convention story, and I tell this story. But I tell the story without mentioning D. Snyder's name. I just mention the guy was a was a was the lead singer of a one hit wonder, right? Ooh. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> no, but, 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 I mean, you're, I mean, it's not it's not a bad right, description. Two, but they had at least two. Or, but the next yeah. day, I get a call from D. Snyder. Saying and saying, hey, Joe, I know you were talking about me because my son Jesse, he 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 recounted that story and it he was very nice to me, you know. And, he, and he's like, he's like, you know, okay, can we do lunch? And anyway, we did lunch, and he was like, Oh, listen, I just want to apologize. It was it was it was great, you know, it was actually really great the way it came around full circle. And, and ironically enough, Jesse ended up actually writing some Marvel stuff. Oh, that um, is a great story. You know, and yeah, so so you know, it was it was it was the full circle kind of thing, right? But man oh man, what, what are the odds, right? Um, sure. that, uh, that, that, you know, hey man, what comes around? But anyway, he, he was, he was really, sweet. he's like, Hey man, you could have been nasty to my son. You could have been this, you could have been that, uh, but you were cool and stuff. So that's kind of cool. You know, that's, great. 
I like that story. Yeah, and then I punched him in the face. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously you got to take him out. <laughs> you know, he's got you got to get some justice. If I had been there, I would have made Dan Street lean justice. on him a little bit. Yeah. Right. But what's really funny is that 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 for my 40th birthday party, I had a big blowout at the China Club. Right, my band played. I had a whole bunch of, and and there were there were some some of the guys from I think one or two of the guys from Twisted Sister were there. Come and one of them came up to me. One of them came up to me and said, Hey man, I heard that the Snyder story. That's who he was back then. I'm so right. sorry. It was like it was very, very funny. That story just keeps coming around and around and around. That's well, speaking of speaking of uh, D Schneider and Twisted Sister and them being a little bit uh crazy, you know, I think they, I think one time they 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 were at a on a tour with um or their I maybe they're their hotel, they shared a hotel with Depeche Mode and they landed up beating the living daylights out of Depeche Mode, apparently. What? Uh, oh my God. Yeah. I'm not buying Dan's lying. That's no, not a good story. I think you might be able to research that one. <laughs> Dan's lying. I, don't, I don't like that story. No. Dan is lying. Maybe. I, maybe I'm lying. Maybe. But I will say, though, one of, the things I like, right, one of the things I like about this story, Joe, is that it, it has A, it's, it's a great. It's just a great story, but I do think that it as a point that you're like that we can pull from that a lesson to be learned is that your behavior at a show has a long range of consequences, and you never know what you're going to end. Up. You never know where it's going to end up. You never know who you're going to meet again. You're yeah. certainly never going to know, and you're always going to be remembered for the the worst thing that you do. Right? It's gonna so always think of like the fact that. We are like it's a small world, and you will bump you will bump into these people oh, yeah. over and over again. No, but listen, I, you know, again, you know, the the, the 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 thought that Dee Snyder would think that you know some kid that he thought was a groupie, you know, some right, right. intro that you thought was a groupie was you know, uh, it, it. But but it's it's just like, yeah, just don't be a dick. Don't be, just a don't dick. be like just don't be a dick. And but, also. But, and, really and Jesse, by the way, Jesse was the nicest kid on the planet. Just such yeah. an absolute sweetheart. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I, you know, it, it was you know, worked out. I think that's, I mean, also, yeah, don't, don't be a dick first off. But if you do happen to come across someone and they are a dick, give them a break. Right. Like I have, when I was first trying to break in, I'm not going to name names, but I came across a professional artist who I had a lot of respect for, and I still do. He's still amazing, still a huge success. But um, uh, he, I showed him my stuff that I was doing in high school, um, and I was, you know, looking for some feedback and some some helpful hints and whatnot. And he told me not to quit my day job, and so was <laughs> was not was not Sorry, super Jeff. cool, right? And um, years later, I wound up doing a project with them, and 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 I have I still have huge respect for him, right? So. But like, you just, you, you don't, if you're going to be either side of the table, it requires a certain amount of leniency and forgiveness and understanding. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, re I remember uh, the first time I met Dick Giordano. Wait a minute, everybody. Hold on. This is Dave Johnson, everybody. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Hey, I don't, you know, people talking, I don't like to cut in, you know, I'm listening <laughs> to the stories. I know. Um, no, the first time I met Dick Giordano, I was, uh, I think I was like 17 or something. And I'd done some Marvel tryout pages, uh, you know, not from the book, just, you know, just did a couple of pages of X-Men. And I was so full of myself. I thought I was the greatest <laughs> until I met Dick Giordano and I showed him and and I, I literally in my mind thought, you know, I'm going to get hired immediately, but because I'm not a DC fan, I'm, I'm going to have to disappoint him because I'm going to hold out for Marvel to hire me. And, and you know, I just thought I'd give this guy a thrill. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm going to let you see what you can't have. Yeah. Right. I know. Right. Right. And, I'm just going to show you a little, I'm going to shake it. Show I'm going to give you a bit. taste of what you'll never get. You yeah. know, I was at that stage when, you know, when you look at your own work and you do one tiny little thing right, and the whole, the rest of it becomes as good as that one tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you were ever at that stage, but I'm, I'm still sort of, there. No. <laughs> right today. <laughs> and so anyway, I, I show him the work and he, I mean, 
and and this inspired me later on in life when I looked at people's work. He ripped me a giant asshole. I mean, he tore. It was like that uh, Steve Rude, uh, Alex Toth critique. I oh mean, yeah, that made the rounds. Yeah, he didn't pull any punches, and I remember walking away just going, "What does that old guy know?" <laughs> 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 Until about a week later, and then it all sunk in. I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, right. yeah." I'm, I'm, but, I, so, and then, but then later on, years, uh, years when I finally did start working, uh, I met him at at HeroesCon, and and I was at Gaijin Studios, and and we all went out to dinner, and and I reminded him of the story, and he apologized, and I was like, "No, are you kidding me, man? That that kicked me into high gear, you know." Yeah. So. Listen, I, I I admit, I mean, I've I've had one or two, thankfully not many, but I've had one or two kids that have brought portfolios to me that um, had a level level of arrogance that that you know wasn't certainly wasn't justified, but a le- the kind of level of arrogance where they were where they were questioning the critique, mm. you know, kind of like you don't know what you're talking about. Right. Um, one of these kids came back two years in a row. Of course, you remember those kids, right? And, and uh, I came back a second year in a row and I and I looked at the portfolio and I started reviewing and he started doing this thing again. And I'm like, look, I'm just going to cut short because first of all, I remember you from last year. And second of all, the portfolio you're showing me right now is the exact same one you showed me last year. Mm. So go home and do some new work. You know, maybe you'll make it. Uh, and I said, and you got to cut the attitude. I, you know, and, and, and I also... Again, I, I say these as cautionary tales for anybody who's looking to break in, not just the comics, but in any business, right? Uh, I remember I, this has happened several times where I've had people write in and say, you need to hire me because I'm better than the people you have right now, right? Mm-hmm. I'm better than Brian Bendis. You know, you have no idea. And like, you know, you, you, you can't denigrate other professionals, people that have been in the industry for a while when you're a complete unknown by saying that. You know, it's just, it's just, you're not, you know, th- those emails don't go very, very far once no. you get them, you know, right. Right. Uh, it's like, it's, uh, could, could you imagine somebody, I mean, like, like somebody handing in cover samples and like, listen, Dave Johnson and those guys you got, I'm, this guy suck. I'm better than they are. Right. It's like, I'm not even opening that portfolio. I'm just not, you know? Yeah. Your uh, sense of perspective, at least communication is way off. It, yeah. It's, it's, it, well, I, I think that there is a, Maybe the perception that 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 being that kind of confident is cool. Right. Um, it's not. It's not. It's just annoying. Right. You, know? you got to earn that kind of level of obnoxiousness, like like me. <laughs> it's like you need years of practice to get years that of level. practice to be an a hole. <laughs> the kind of a hole that I am. Yeah. Right. Right. There's a grace to it. It yeah. takes a lot. There's a, lot a of grace training. to it. Yeah. Just you know. I was watching uh, the Disney Channel um, last night, and they had the Marvel section. And I think there's something on um, Disney six six one six, and uh, Christopher Priest is on there, and he was he was our original um, you know editor from yeah, it's my first editor how we met, yeah. Um, and I was just breaking into the business back then, and I remember I wanted to I saw a cover, and I I decided that I was I should be inking that cover like that. That should be me. And uh, I told uh, Christopher, I was like, uh, you know, uh, let, you know, I should I should have this job. I gave him a lot of reasons. And then he just stopped me. And this is I'm gl- so glad he did because it stuck with me. He goes, he goes, well, so you're telling me you you want to take that person's job. And um, he, and the way he phrased it. it it was just it really put things in perspective for me so that that man earned that job and you have to you you want to be inking covers and you have to earn that position and and you, you're, you're new in the business this guy's worked a long long time um he has a relationship with the, with the um with the penciler you know that that's who the penciler chose right and it, you know it's you know you, you got to respect that so it, it stuck with me and um uh, he was a great editor he's a great editor he's a great writer um, yep. It taught me a lot and uh, taught me a lot about respect in that moment. So, um, yeah, you need you need to be taught respect. I, well, I didn't even have a, a big ego, but I was just like, I, I think I can do better than this guy, you know, but yeah, that's not ego at all. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think it was ego, but I, I do think it was out of, it was out of place. 
now. <laughs> I don't well, think, I mean, I think, I, I think things... there is something to that where, where you, yeah. just because you, you might think that doesn't mean that you get to, you get to do it, you know? What yeah. I think, think that this is, that's one of those inside voice moments, Dan. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't listen to that one too often. Joe. Well, as yeah. I mean, as professional artists, you, you have, we have to have that dichotomy of like, I'm the greatest that's ever been mixed with, I have everything to work on and what I do is crap. And then you have to walk that line to try and promote. I mean, you have to constantly be moving back and forth between getting better as an artist, but then also promoting yourself. Right. I think that's, and that when you go to a show, you have to be very careful and sensitive to whatever you're saying, whatever side of that equation you're on, how it's being received, right? You need to, to really be looking at, you need to be listening a lot because. Yeah. But I, I, I do think the easiest way to promote yourself is, you know, you have some confidence in your abilities, but, but just, just do good work, yeah. do good work and, and be easy to work with. Even if you, if, even if you're, you know, even if you're missing deadlines, where just just be honest and 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 just be easy to work with, you know. Yeah. Understand that, you know. Uh, I can tell you horror stories uh, of delusionment, you know, where, where people think that they're not behind on deadlines, or they or they don't, or they aren't, uh, or that they're faster than they actually are. You know, I right. you know when I was younger, I thought that for sure. Oh, I'm much faster than, than the fact that I'm not that fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I would be faster if for, if for the only, for one little fact, I'm just not that fast. I'm just like, it's me yeah. is the thing. Yeah. I mean, they, they, you, you will, you will, you will find, you will find similar traits in a lot of the people that, uh, that do the best work, but also get consistent work mm -hmm. is that they, they, they have that, that sort of gene that is there easy to work with, you know, yeah. Yeah. They, you get an email from an editor. Yeah. Huh? If I say you get an email from an editor and they're asking about pages, write back immediately. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and have that discussion with them. Don't uh, don't wait all day or wait two days or uh, hope that you can get enough in to satisfy them. Mm -hmm. or, or, yes. or 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 you send them an empty FedEx box. <laughs> yeah, that was a great story. See that, I that, mean, that, both are good. That is a both good responses. Yeah, and that's not as good as the one you have to send the FedEx box with blank pages. Oh, that's even yeah. better. Right. And you have to that's say that, you know, the, this is the one I got. You, you, blank page is like, oh, my God, I must have thrown in the blank pages instead of the the pencil ones. Ah, yeah, I'll right. get those out to you in, 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 in two weeks. <laughs> not only did you not do the work, but you cost the company the whatever that FedEx price was. Yeah. Back then it was, it was $17. Right, right. I remember. You know what's funny is I remember thinking that was expensive. Yeah. 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 It was uh, – <laughs> but look, I mean, you know, it's we're, we're on a bit of a different subject, but you know, the, the you know, your, your brand, your reputation. Yeah, I've been in editorial meetings, right? Where 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 you know they're developing new projects, and an editor will say, Get you know, Dan. I'm I'm thinking about you know this artist for this project, and and every once in a while you'll see a whole room groan, go oh. Right. right, and it could be for a number of different reasons: either difficult to work with, not on time, right. you know, they lie, whatever, whatever it may be. Yeah, you don't want to be that person, right? And by, by the way, the flip side of it also is like, how often do, do creators, you know, at a at a at a bar at a convention, you know, mention an editor's name, and everybody goes, oh, right? They're just certain editors. It just yeah. you don't want to be that person. You yeah. you want to be the person like I love working for that person, or I love working with that person. Yeah. Uh, if you if you can manage it, you know, not everybody's gonna have a pristine relationship with everybody, but you want to at least have. You know, we just spent a little time talking about T Scott Dunbeer, right? Scott Dunbeer. Scott's awesome. Um, I, I I remember I was at WonderCon, and uh, I wasn't editor in chief yet. I was I was still working at Marvel Knights, and Jeff Loeb was was doing Daredevil Yellow for us, and and Scott was sort of hobnobbing with creators and stuff like that. And Jeff turned to me and he's like, "Who would have thought?" that a guy who was an art dealer turns out to be the best editor in comics. You know what I mean? And that's simply because, you know, Scott just was great with relationship with, with creators. He just understood them. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's kind of where you want to be if you could help, you know, you get there. You know, absolutely. Dave, Dave, do you agree? Well, gentlemen, that, that, I, I, I agree. Dave, how about you? Sure. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. There you have it, folks. Well, 
<sighs> well, gentlemen, that was a fantastic episode. I think that that was a lot of fun. Dan, can I see your drawing one last time? Since can can we grade everybody's performance here? Can, wait, actually, let's all grade Dan's performance here. I well, give I mean, Dan. I, I'm the only one who drew something that we've seen. Dave, Dave I'm going to give Dan feeling. an A for just the drawing. Yeah. Mm. I like Drawing's that. Nice. I like that samurai. I like the, the drawing's nice. We didn't need Dan on the on the on the, on the show. You know, True. just really added. It was his show. He added nothing. Yeah. Nothing. All right. Here. Here's what oh my God. Dave, are you going to show something? Look it out, Dave. Oh, Look oh it boy. out. Everything. Oh okay. God. Ooh. Nice. Oh, Ooh. Well, 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 I take it all back. Oh. Son of a bitchy. Mm. So much going on there. So, I like what's that, happening there. But, you know, there you go. Is that a little bit of gouache? Uh, it's all watercolor at this point, but eventually I'll probably throw some other mediums on it. Like gouache? Uh, I, like, I like all these artists that use other things than ballpoint pen. <laughs> Which, which is the I mean, only tool I'm comfortable with. You're, you love ballpoint pen. I saw I saw an artist from Marvel turned in a, a ballpoint pen drawing. Um, yeah, was it good? Cover. It's really good. It's an electric. Oh, there you go. Idea. I mean, it wasn't me. I know that because my ballpoint pen drawings are a mess. Was but, it Dan? <laughs> no, wasn't no, it wasn't me. I mean, Frank Frank Cho does ballpoint pen. Drawings. Frank Cho's a ballpoint pen drawings are amazing. You know what's weird with a ballpoint pen? You can get an exceptionally fine line with those things. It's it's really crazy. It, you get, it, the thing I like about it is it's got a lot of it's it's like um, you you don't have to be really cautious with it. You can get a, a huge range of line and and it's it's super. It, it can be very subtle, and it can't it can be very soothing. Yeah, no, it's certainly soothing. Hmm. Yeah, Joe, would you admit it's soothing on some level? I'm sorry. What? <laughs> All right, guys. I think that. Um, <laughs> This was an excellent episode. I really appreciate you guys coming on. I'm glad that Dan was able to air his Barcon grievances. Excellent. I excellent. didn't really, I didn't really go into the whole Barcon thing the way I wanted to because I wanted to get really gritty about it and I wanted to get some hate mail. But um, uh, so Joe, Joe you, what, I, we got a few minutes. Go. I'll wait. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I start drawing that little samurai Wolverine, and um, I just it lightened my mood right up. It's that's like the therapy, therapy right there. Me. That's art. That uh, that's soothing art right there. Yeah. Normally, oh, I'm wait, where, where's though. where's Ben today? Ben's got personal stuff. Yeah, he's got Ooh. a lot of personal stuff. He's got family stuff. Oh, okay, family stuff. I thought it was when that. I said excellent, Joe, excellent episode. I meant I was talking about me and my oh, yeah. camera work. By the way, and, Jeff, Jeff at the helm, a much smoother system. I love it. Yeah, he's like the Captain Kirk of this thing. He just he understands exactly how to. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's it comes it comes from deep. My yeah. Kirkisms are strong. Um, all right, gentlemen. So, do we have an idea for? Uh, I think this is a great episode. Do we have an idea think, next Jim week? Food, Jim of Food, right? Jim of Food is going to be our guest. The man yeah. is has some definitely has some good stories. Right. I don't think there's anybody out there that dislikes Jim of Food, but maybe I've never met anyone. No. Yeah. You know, we, we should also want to just want to mention a couple of things. We we um, we probably should do an episode on the uh, the JP Leone. Uh, crowdfunding effort they're doing. They're, oh, they're, they're doing Absolutely. Their, uh, older man. So I, you know, I, I, I was just sort of starting to doodle out my sketch here, but maybe uh, next week I'll probably start working on it in earnest on the show. Okay. Um, we, but we probably, we probably now? should, we, we should probably either have, um, maybe we should get Brett on. They would get Brett yeah. Lewis and maybe Tommy, Tommy Lee Edwards. Both Tommy Lee, yeah. Yeah. Talk a little bit about JP while we, uh, while we draw his characters. Yeah. Uh, Excellent. So be kind of cool. And, Bernard, Dave, Bernard. Dave, we're going to Baltimore Con, right? You I'll and me? There. You and Just me? made my uh, reservations today. So, right now, Dan, you're, Dan. You're, Dan, you I have heard of Josh Barnett's blood sport. You have the ability. You have the ability to go to Baltimore Con. You've you've been you've been given the opportunity, uh, and yet you're saying no. You're I saying no to, to Dave and myself, and you know. Well, there's a little bit of a COVID issue with my, my wife's a little, you know, COVID crazy. Have you heard of it? It's a <laughs> pandemic, Joe. Yeah. It's crazy times. Crazy uh, times. But I am going to go to a crazy wrestling thing that day. Sure, because that'll be perfectly COVID free. Well, yeah, right. So Josh is doing a it's a catch wrestling event. No, it's a pro wrestling event called Blood Sport, and okay. uh, Josh mm -hmm. is going to wrestle. There's. Um, oh, he's actually wrestling. He's, yeah, he's participating. Eric the Hammer is going to yeah. wrestle. 
Um, Will you be close enough to the to the uh, to the fighting where like sweat can and blood can splatter? Blood and COVID all over. Oh, good, good. Yeah, that, that's good. That'll be cool. It's like a Gallagher wearing, show. Hmm? I'll be wearing like remember the remember John Travolta, the boy in the bubble. I'm going to be yes. traveling in kind of like a <laughs> hamster wheel, a hamster yeah. like globe. Mm. Good times. Yeah. Good times. Can't believe you're not going to go to Baltimore. I haven't been there in a long time. You know who li lives there is Frank Cho. So that I don't so, want to step I on his I thought he was moving. Did he move? He hasn't moved. He's 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 vacillating between Las Vegas and uh, LA. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't say where he's moving to. Huh. He's, he cool. says it all day on, online. It's not like a right. secret. Where's right, he going? Enough. Las Vegas or where? He shows us pictures of potential houses he's going to buy. <laughs> he's got a street. He got street signs in, in yeah. the images. He's going to use yeah. Google Maps. The, the, the problem is that there's people in those houses uh, currently. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. So, that is that but, is the problem. Yeah, but anyway, so anyone, they, anyone who's entertaining going to Baltimore, come on down to Baltimore. It's, I'm going to be I'm going to be walking this show for the next few weeks. You'll so, hear some uh, stories from Joe, and you and you might get a nod from Dave Johnson. Yeah, maybe. Well, I mean, I think hey, this is good. Dave, are you doing the Harvey you're Awards? Are you going to do the Harvey Awards? Hell no. What? No? What do you got against Harvey Kurtzman? Right. right. <laughs> Nothing. Well, that's a fourth of an award show. Joe is up for six awards, six Harveys. No. You are? No. Yeah. As as anyone watching the show, take everything you've learned from tonight's episode and apply it to the to, to the Baltimore show and just be cool. I'm gonna I did win a, I did win a Harvey a long time ago, though. What? I won a Harvey a long time ago. You did win a Harvey? Yeah, when I first oh, started. By the way, uh, I have to mention this because it's so – I've been waiting. Like me, Howard Chaikin, and, and other uh, – like Mark Chiarillo have been waiting for years for this book to finally get Wrong. made. One of the best artists uh, in the 20th century. Yeah. And nobody really – Herb. Herb. You know. Good old Herb. Good old Herb. Herb. Is that the deluxe version or the regular – uh, it's just a regular. I think the deluxe yeah. comes with a slipcase, which I never use. Yeah, it's a, slip, it's a slipcase and signed by the author. So yeah, uh, but yeah, it's not. I, just, I ordered it this week too. So it's gorgeous. Or, pause or anything, yeah. but this book is amazing, and they use the painting that I own on the back cover. So wow, you know, wow. It's wow. Pretty, uh, look at you! Oh. Something that painting. That painting. Nice. No wonder why you bought that, Dave. God, it's gorgeous. Well, that really? and it's. You know, a, a train it's, coming out of a tunnel, if you know what I mean. It's yeah. a little yeah. phallic. I was going to say, it's a little mean. phallic, dude. All right. Well, well hey, believe me. It's a lot if, phallic. It's if a lot. this one's available, I would have bought that. But It's yeah. even more phallic. Yeah. Finding, you know, paintings from him. But no, I do he's... own a couple of paintings. So, yeah. Um, but this is an amazing, I mean, way overdue for this book to finally get made. So, if you're a fan of Herbert Paz or... Even if you're you've never heard of them, definitely if you're a fan of art, yeah. go out and buy this book. Yeah, our our uh, well, his friends call him Herb. They do. Herb. Yeah, Herb. Is this one his friend? I was gonna make a peaches and Herb. Well, Herb Herbie, Herbie, pause. Yeah. Um, well, no, I've never won an award, you guys. It's, it's, like, it's like a fifty dollar book, right? I just ordered it. I forgot. It's like fifty, right? Uh, forty four. Forty four. So oh. fifty. I guess. Worth it at twice the price. Yeah, no, I mean, seriously, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous book. I mean, it's, um, so I thought it was going to be like a thin and it, thin book and they weren't going to have a lot of stuff in it, but it, it's got a ton of his work. So I'm very happy. So he's an awesome guy. He was, he was at least. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's my plug. I don't, I don't have any need to uh, plug. Oh, no. oh, oh, we're talking Jeff. about mead? Hang on a second. Yeah, Jeff, and, uh, throw, throw some um, sponsor stuff up. I, so far, we're we're all. Uh, oh God, there you, you go. like that one? How's this yeah, one? I do. Hold on, that's a little. Whoa. Goodness so anyway, God. I didn't talk about mead. I showed a little bit of stuff, but like. Uh, Jesus, there it is. Yeah, yeah. There's some mead. Look at that. That was what I was drinking tonight. It's fantastic. Here's the problem I have with this. I love Seymour's. But here's the problem. The only one benefiting from this blasted sponsorship of yours is you, Jeff. Well, I mean, it's not as though you guys weren't invited to participate. None of you drink mead. Can they I make something else? It seems like Dan is more upset about mead than he is about, <laughs> about Barcon. Yeah. So, if I got any mead, I would drink some mead. Oh, well, y'all make sure you get some mead, my friend. All right. Fair enough. All right. All right. So, what, so, so mead? Yeah. Steamworks Meadery here in Medford. 
it's a great place. All right, All right let's let's go ahead and uh, both one Comic Con. David and I both one Comic Con. Guy's gonna be at Comic Con. Dan's not gonna be Comic Con. He's gonna look, be at the wrestling match. Look, just, just Dave alone. Dave alone was worth the price of admission. Now I'm there too. Oh come on, man. Wow. It's good times. It's wow. Very good times. You know. By the way, if Dan goes, they will lower ticket prices, so we should encourage him. You know, Frank is trying to work on some kind of deal where they um, pay us like astronomical prices to be there. Frank, who? Which one? The Frank Thierry. The Frank Thierry. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great roommate, I hear. Yeah. Actually, well, I don't roommate. like rooming with Frank. <laughs> Although, as we've said in other shows, like rooming with Frank at a convention, the moment he opens the door to the hotel room, it's like it's a superpower. It yeah. looks like a disaster. You, you, might as, you, might as well, you might as well call like the local zoo mm. and say, you know, do you, do, you have, do you have a gorilla or a, yeah. or, or a bison or anything that could room with me? Might as well. It's unbelievable. Like, it's just junk, food, clothes. I'm like, you, you just got here. Are you, how many different clothes have you? I mean, it's just, it is mayhem. I've never yeah. seen anything like it. When if me, when if I, I have to room with him again, I'm going to put housekeeping on call. I'm just going to have to put that. <laughs> no, he doesn't want housekeeping. He doesn't want housekeeping in there the whole time. They're not allowed in. Oh, right. no. I, I don't care. I'm going to yeah. just have him literally. When I go to a hotel, I like to keep it like I put stuff in the drawers. I play, I'm like, I want to keep this as nice as possible for as long as possible and keep this hotel beautiful. Vacation, stay away from my home experience. I want yeah. it to be pristine. Yeah. So that's the only problem I have with Frank. Right. It's a complete. Now, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. How How old is your son now, Dan? He is seven. Seven. Okay. So, so what is easier, rooming with your son in a hotel room or Frank? <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you brought in like six goats, that would be an easier time. Yeah. 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 I'm saying, yeah. Just Just fill your room with wild animals. Yeah. Wild animals that are not house because he's also not housebroken. That's the other thing. It's awful. Oh, <laughs> is there a hurricane? Has there ever been a hurricane named Frank? There should be. There should be. There should be. They're all named after girls. It's like Frank. This the, 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 that little silver thing on the side of the toilet. It's you know toothpaste just, for you. Uh, toothpaste is on the ceiling. Um, I don't know what happens. But it's, it's so like if you get in there, if he gets in there five minutes before you, expect a horrible ho hotel room. It's it's mm -hmm. awful. Well, we yeah. covered a, a lot of ground tonight. It seems like uh, the biggest con of being of conventions is rooming with Frank. Yeah, if you got conned into oh. that, yeah, absolutely. If you got conned into that con. All right. <laughs> yep. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's sign off. Toodaloo, everybody. Thanks for listening. Toodaloo, to our everyone. Podcast. Good night. Good luck. <laughs> really, it, thank you. And just just be cool at a show. That's all. All right, everyone. That's Easier said than done. All right. Toodaloo.